Hi, this is Paul Palmer. So this week we've been talking about quality assurance principles. We've also talked about um, teamwork and then we've talked about globalization in the pharmaceuticals industry. Now, how do you move this forward? So one of the tools that I like to use for throughout this um, working together ethos, I suppose, is probably the best way to put it, is process mapping. Now, I say process mapping because it's not just about the SOPs. It's not just about the team within, the, within um, one site or one department. It's about the overall process. So how can you use a process mapping? How, how do you do it? Well, you can use PowerPoint, just use the boxes. You can use the symbols that we've got behind us, the ones that I've got here. So this one here, the diamond is a decision point. You've got the ovals, starts and ends. You've got squares. You've got all different tools that you can use different shapes. But when's it useful? Well, think about globalization of the pharmaceutical industry. The supply chain is throughout the world. And if you're going to manufacture in one country and supply to another and supply then forward on to another and, and different things happen in different countries, how are you going to track it? Well, mapping the supply chain is, is required to be able to place the product on the market, especially in the EU. So you need to understand the different stages. And the best way to understand it is to actually draw it out. Don't write a massive long paragraph that you're going to submit to the regulators. Draw pictures. This country, then this country, then this country, then this country. And this is what happens at each stage. And this is where it's placed on the market. End of story. And using a simple diagram instead of three paragraphs of text will actually get better comprehension from the people that you're trying to communicate with than if you just give them the text. Now, similarly, if you look at a work instruction or an SOP, and you look at the different stages throughout that process, because it is, again, a process, you can use the same tool. You can use the same diagram, the same flowchart. You go step by step. You even use the same shapes. Oval to start, diamond for a decision, square for an activity. And of course, there's a whole lot more if you use Visio. But they're the basics. It's much While I'm talking about it, I'll just give you the basics. So what do you do? Well, this is where the process starts. This is where the process ends. But what about all the steps in between? What about where you feed out to somewhere else? Well, if it goes off to another SOP, put a circle in there and a reference to the SOP. You don't have to write all the content again. You just reference where it's going. That's called the off-page reference tool. But what about within the SOP? What about when you're going through it and you have to make a decision and there's a review and you have to go back because that review says this partner is doing well, diamond. Go back, join at the place where you need to do the next bit of work and off you go again. And actually by doing that, rather than saying I'll go from section 3.2 to section 7.3.4 and back to section 2.2, actually it's much easier to follow if you have a nice flow chart. But don't make them too complicated. I try not to use the one where it goes a straight line and then a little jump and then a straight line. That's when it's crossing over something else that's happening. And that's when things start to get confusing. And the other thing to think about, as you can see in the, the, the diagram behind me, you've got the direction of activity. The direction, this is where it goes, from here to here. If it goes both days, it can go back again. Maybe you have a feedback loop rather than bi-directional because it's when you get a bi-directional arrow, it gets confusing. So where else can you use the process flow map, process mapping? Well, what about the flow of the uh, materials, the flow of the people? Well, it's not quite the same approach, but if you draw out the actual location where you are and you do color and you map it with a, with a line, you can see where people can go and you can see why they would go that way and why they would go somewhere else. And you usually find that you can identify crossover points where you can change the flow to avoid mix-ups in products. So mix-ups between batches or between products. 
So I like to use a process mapping tool. I find in pharmaceuticals, it's a really, really strong methodology. And it visualizes, it allows you to visualize the whole process rather than just part of it. And of course, the other thing you need to think about is when you use it, how do different things fit together? Because you can do your top level chart and you can identify the different SOPs on the way. Then you, in your side your SOP, you treat that as another top level. You do the process within the SOP and you feed out to your work instructions and your forms. And then from your work instructions, you've got a final flow chart, which identifies which um, forms you will be using to generate your records or which computer system or which other work instruction you need to refer to if something has been done differently or maybe an SOP too. You could even start at the top with the, the um, policies. So that's it for today. That's Paul Palmer. Just talking about the uses and benefits of using process mapping in pharmaceuticals. I'll talk to you soon.